should the Dolphins move off of him? So what we could just set some context. So two is as a starter has come in in multiple games. He's also been subbed out of games for Fitzpatrick in games. He's been uh, underwhelming, you could say. And as of now, the Dolphins have the number three overall pick via the Texans for that uh, trade in which they committed highway robbery. And they also have two other first rounders. They have their own. They have the Steelers. They have a bunch of second round picks and they have uh, extra picks next year, too. So this is the best chance they have to go all in on a quarterback, whether that be Fields, um, Zach Wilson, Wilson. Trey Lance, Mac Jones. I mean, Trevor Lawrence pretty much set at number one, so that's not really much of a possibility. But, Vish, what do you think about the Dolphins potentially? Um, should they even think about moving off to it, or should they certainly do it? Well, we can't say anything with certainty because we don't know how good college prospects are going to be. I mean, two years ago, Tua was thought of as the best college quarterback since, like, Andrew Luck. People were so high on him. And then he picks up a couple injuries and all of that, and people aren't so high on him before the draft last year. I do think they have to look into it. And it's not that Tua is bad. I actually think Tua has been fairly solid. He's not a bad player by any means. It's not like he was losing them games by turning the ball over. He just wasn't making enough plays. That was the thing with him. Well, I think two was a pretty solid player. But the thing is, I don't think the Miami Dolphins are going to be picking top five for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. I think Brian Flores is that good of a coach. I think they've assembled that good of a roster with their defense and with their offensive weapons, the fact that they have assets to grow it. So I think they have to make that consideration. And the reason I think that consideration has to be there is because I don't think Tua's ceiling is that high. You're looking at, for me, Tua right now is kind of small, not super athletic, and doesn't exactly have a big arm. When we're talking about the guys that are the top guys for the foreseeable future, we're talking Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, the common Justin Herbert The common theme between all of these guys is that they're physically very, very above average. And Mm -hmm. Tua doesn't have a great arm. It's okay. He's not super athletic. And he doesn't make a lot of big-time throws where it's like Joe Burrow, there's nothing there, escapes escapes the pocket, makes a guy miss, and makes a really nice throw down the field. He's pretty good within a system, which is good. I think he can be a good player. Mm -hmm. But I think if the Dolphins study these quarterbacks and they realize, hey, Justin Fields, if we get him and put him in our offense and teach him how to play quarterback with his physical gifts, he could be 10 times what we think Tua is currently. Or same thing with Zach Wilson. Then I think it's a move they got to make. But I'm not going to say, oh, they should move off of Tua. I'm not going to say, oh, they shouldn't move off of Tua. I'm just saying that this is a variable that they need to consider because they're picking at number three. So I'm going to disagree with you on this one. If I'm the Dolphins, um, I, I kind of am with you on the Tua that he doesn't really have the makings of being like a top five quarterback. He doesn't have the strongest arm. He's mobile, but not like like a Lamar or someone like that where he can like mm-hmm. you can run power plays, right? Um, so my thing with him is they have him four years cheap. I'm really thinking that they, in the next few years, all they got to do is get like a really good team and he could be a good enough game manager that they can compete and go deep into the playoffs. And when you're looking at their defense, they probably don't really need to draft anyone in the early rounds. Like their defense is really good. They have Flores who's in by all accounts, as of now, from what we've seen, he's a coach of the year, uh, potentially coach of the year. I'd say Stefanski's probably ahead right now just because they made the playoffs. Flores too. Yeah. But he's still been amazing, right? He's done a good job. He's actually looking like the only uh, Belichick disciple who's going to be a good coach. And so they have the third pick in the draft, right? Um, So obviously there's a ton of quarterbacks, but something people haven't been talking about enough is the offensive tackle Sewell. Um, And he's the highest – one of the highest rated offensive linemen like ever. Um, People are saying since Orlando Pace – and so we know, like, Orlando Pace is a Hall of Famer, right? So when he was in college, he actually got fourth. He was fourth in the Heisman race as an offensive lineman. And that's the type of prospect he's being compared to. 
Number one overall pick. I, that's a t- yeah, one of the guys. That's a type of guy I want on my team. And my thing with Tua too is when you look at this offense, they don't really have much talent, right? Their offensive line is all right. Um, it definitely could get better. Sewell would help that. Their receivers aren't all that great. Their top two are Devontae Parker and Jusecki. Um, like that's probably one of the worst like duos for teams. And their running back group isn't all that spectacular either. Right. Um, and their team is okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking they definitely are just going to go offensive heavy in this draft. Um, take a lineman. They're going to draft a receiver. And this receiving class is really, really good. You know, there's Jamar Chase, Waddle, Smith, uh, Bateman. There's tons of dudes. I'm thinking they're going with a couple of uh, a lineman, a receiver, and then evaluate it from there. Um, but I don't think they should. I think you got to let them develop. And that's one of the things that um, teams. After seeing what Herbert and Burrow did, teams are probably a little more impatient seeing what Kyler did. And, like, it's a more quarterback-friendly league, right? And so teams are like, if if my quarterback doesn't look amazing off the start, just get him for a new one. And I just disagree with that entirely. Yeah, so that's kind of the new NFL premise, right? Like, 10 mm-hmm. years ago, this conversation would be insane. And then the Cardinals drafted Josh Rosen 10, shipped him to Miami, and drafted Kyler Murray. So that president has kind of changed the outlook. And I think a lot of it is because of the changing contract structure. Yeah. Right now, the NFL is all about maximizing a Super Bowl window with a cheap quarterback. And that's a quarterback on a rookie contract. And I agree. Like, the Miami offense needs help. Like, And I think Tua can be very solid and you can win with Tua with if you give him weapons and you build a better scheme around him. Both of those things I totally agree with. But the thing for me is if you're doing those things and he's a Jared Goff level player, you know, one of those quarterbacks that's not a superstar, but he fits somewhere 15 to 20 in the NFL, you know, Jared with like Goff, Jimmy G, those kind of guys. Can you win mm-hmm. a Super Bowl with him? I'm not 100 percent sure if you can. And I think if Miami looks at it and they evaluate these quarterbacks and they say Justin Fields for sure star or Zach Wilson, we really think he can be a star with us. Mm-hmm. Then you got to pull a trigger because pull the trigger because the difference between having a good roster and having Mahomes or Lamar or Deshaun Watson is totally different from having a good roster and having like a Jared Goff. So that's where I'm a little all over the place with this entire kind of situation. Yeah. Because in theory, I agree with you, right? You have a young quarterback, you just invested in him, he's coming off a brutal injury. And all of these things, like, why don't you get him help and try to build around him? Where's the concept of letting quarterbacks develop? But, but if you can go into this draft with the top five pick when you're not going to be picking top five much longer because of your coach and your roster, Mm -hmm. and you look at one of these quarterbacks and say, dang, I think they're going to be a star. Then I I just, I just feel that man, because it's because I just don't believe that much into a ceiling from a physical standpoint. Yeah, I think it's very, very limited. It's not like he's Kyler Murray where he's small, but he's ridiculously fast with an enormous arm. He's kind of B across the board or kind of average across yeah. the board, like pretty good arm, beautiful quick release, uh, not that athletic, kind of quick, but not athletic enough to run away from pressure, kind of small. Yeah. So all those things are there. I think Tua is a good player. I think Tua can be a good player. But if they look at one of those guys physically and they see, well, he can be like Justin Herbert because that's what they're going to be measured up against yeah. because they passed on Herbert. And if, if they look at fields and they say, dang, he's got that type of physical gifts, then I think they got to make the move that way. No, I'm with you on that too. Like if they think that Zach Wilson or if field somehow falls to them, because you never know what the Jets are going to do too. They, right. they could take it like as much as they should take a quarterback. If they, for some reason, believe in Darnold and that, most of the stuff wasn't his fault. They could take Sewell at number two. I mean, they could always use O line help. Um, and then if Fields is there at three, like that kind of puts them in a situation where they're like, if they think Fields is like that dude that's going to be top five quarterback and they don't think Tua can reach even top 10, maybe like that could definitely be an avenue they take. Um, and what we have talked about before is like QB on a rookie deal, right? And so they would have. They still would have Tua for four years, or they could go with Fields for five years, or Zach Wilson, or whoever they think is like the next star, right? Yeah. Uh, 
And the other thing is, I think that's not being talked about is Miami's not bereft of assets. They have a ton of assets. Yeah. So even if they spend the third overall pick on a quarterback, they still have six picks within the top 100, yeah. which means that they can still address, okay, you don't get Sewell. Maybe the offensive line situation, they can improve through free agency because they're still going to be one of the top five teams in terms of cap space. And they can still, this receiver class is still loaded. They can come back in the draft and with one of their three second round, two second round picks, take a Chris Olave or a Rondale mm -hmm. Moore, somebody like that. And all of a sudden they're still getting better weapons. And if you get the special quarterback physically, then your window is limitless for those five years. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's a lot to consider. There's still a lot that needs to happen. I don't think my thought process even on this is, um, what should I say? It's It has enough clarity where I'm, I'm just kind of throwing out a bunch of random thoughts in my head. I think yeah. you have a more understanding of where you see this situation, mm -hmm. but I think it's something definitely to watch how it progresses through the off season. Yeah. And with that too, they have cap space, right? Like it's not like, it's not the Jaguars cap space where they have like a hundred million, but they still do have good ample cap space where they can sign people that they need to. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're talking to is, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. I was going to say my other thing is too, Maybe they like, say, Trey Lance or Mac Jones, but they want to get that offensive tackle. They still have uh, their pick and the Steelers pick. So those are like middle of the first round. Uh, Steelers, they don't, Steelers. They don't have the Steelers. I thought they had three. Or was it? No, last that year? was last year. That was uh, last year. They so yeah. have one, one, two twos, and three threes. Okay. But even still, if they use their pick in some of their like mid round and later picks, they can move up to like, Top 10, right, right. Not sacrificing too much, and they could still probably get one of the probably like the three to uh, four, five, six quarterback that like. So the top yeah. two are firmly set as Lawrence and Fields. I think we can all agree on that, right? Yeah. Um, I think after that, it's kind of more personal preference. There's Zach Wilson, Mac Jones, Trey Lance. Um, is it just those guys, or am I forgetting? Yeah, I think I think the top three is set between Lawrence, Wilson, and Fields. Yeah, I think Wilson's those are the top three. three. And then I think Jones, Lance, Trask, Desmond Ritter, a lot Trask, of guys too. fall. Yeah, in the next. So they, if they thought one of those dudes, like if they, if like Trey Lance, for example, is like a pretty polarizing quarterback, right? He has all the physical tools. Um, you don't know if like all his technical skills are the best, and you don't know his competition level was Experience. the best. Yeah, exactly. So if they think he could be someone, they could move up and take him like with the 10th pick or something. And that's really not like handicapping him too much for assets that they have. It's right. definitely something, I mean, I'm still of the mindset that they shouldn't do it, but it's not something that they should just completely close the book on. Right. And that's, that's, that's my ultimate take. I think, mm -hmm. I think that it's not something that's pressing. Cause I think two was sh showed even in his small time starting though, there weren't any big time plays like, He's solid. He can manage the game for sure. At the very least, he can be a top 20 type quarterback. And I think that they got to at least evaluate it. They got to open that avenue and make sure that they do their due diligence just to ensure that they're making the right decision at quarterback. And I thought actually what you brought up is interesting with the guys. Let's say they find they think a guy at four is their guy. They think he's the best guy in this draft. They think he's special. They think Lance is the guy they look at. They could even trade down, get a couple, couple more yeah. picks get a pick for Tua, and then they're still in control of this draft board. So they have a lot of leverage on a lot of different ways they want to go. And then the other thing you brought up with free agency before we close this topic is that there are a lot of really good free agent wide receivers. There's a mm -hmm. lot of really good wide receivers in this draft. You're going to have a Juju Smith-Schuster be a free agent. You're going to have an Allen Robinson be a free agent, a Kenny Galladay, an A.J. Green, a Marvin Jones, all pretty good players that, might, that would – Besides Devontae Parker, maybe even all five of those guys are better than Devontae Parker. So if yeah. you can get Devontae Parker, Allen Robinson, and a draft pick, your receiving room is yeah. so much better because Gusecki is a good receiving, receiving tight end. Room. It's right. like certainly a top 10 receiving room. And you have Gusecki at tight end who, although he's not the best blocker, he's still pretty good receiving. And you could always find a blocking tight end somewhere. Um, yeah. I'm just big on, I mean, for team structure, I'm pretty big on like building up the line. Um, I think that's proven over the years to be the most effective way to like make it deep is um, just have a strong offense and defensive line. But, um, and also another thing too, is they could also just retain Fitzpatrick and 
you know, if Tua gets injured or he's like playing bad, he he's shown glimpses of this just magic greatness. I mean, that throw against the Raiders was one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. Um, that that should get talked about more. I know it was getting hyped up a lot, but like seriously. The man was yeah. getting he literally had his face mask getting yanked. I don't know how he didn't get whiplash. Um, but yeah, impressive. And Jamal and Jamal brought up Will Filler. He yeah. would be another great fit. So there's a lot of avenues. The bottom line is whether they stick with Tua, whether they go in a different direction. If you're a Miami Dolphins fan, you should be on cloud nine because your yeah. team has an opportunity to be dominant with Brian Flores, all those assets, all those picks, all that money, and that defense. They're going to be Four really more years special. of a cheap quarterback at least, right? Yeah. Yeah, right? They're going to be fantastic. Mm-hmm.